and ingrained in me the love for the game, and then my dad was there taking me to the baseball fields. Uh, some of you may not know, but the Bronx is kind of rough on kids. It's a, it's a rough environment to grow up, but it also makes you strong. And baseball was a way for me to to be focused on something I love instead of focusing on a lot of negativity. So, in, in any place that you grow up, or whether bad or good, there's some good things, and I'm glad that I was able to harness the good things from there. And baseball <coughs> gave a lot to me and allowed me to get through high school at least. And I was able, I was fortunate to be able to serve in my country, the United States, and the Air Force. Did that for nine years. Served overseas uh, for Iraqi freedom, Enduring freedom, and I, I was. You know, I was fortunate to be stationed in Hawaii, such a tough duty, <laughs> and Guam, and places like that. And, but it was a great joy for me to be able to serve my country and uh, be able to learn engineering while I was there. You know, I was able. To, you know, that's what I do now with the Corps of Engineers: construction management, um, drawings, uh, surveying, anything that's related to engineering. You know, I'm fortunate to know that. And a couple of years ago, I was. You know, I'm always always involved in baseball. Uh, but about 12 years ago, I developed some chronic pain in my back due to you know injuries, you know, to military running, jumping, and stuff like that. Uh, and I had chronic pain for a while. So when I came back, I was stationed in Afghanistan in 2011 with the Corps of Engineers. When I came back, I was feeling pretty good. I was like, oh, maybe I can play baseball again. You know, my chronic pain is not bothering me that much. So let me go ahead and start playing again. So I started playing baseball again, and. First couple of games, I, I could barely walk because my back was killing me. It's like, well, I'll, I'll try to stick it out a few games here and there, and it just it just wasn't work. Well, the good thing is that I, I had a baseball bat that I had. I paid a lot of money for it. I'm like, man, this, this bat's expensive nowadays, and it broke. So I'm thinking, yeah, I don't want to pay all this money for this bat. Dude. Let me see. I remember my dad used to put nails in it to tape. And then I was like, okay, well, cork. maybe, I, yeah, cork. <laughs> so it's like, hey, let me go ahead and try to fix it. Maybe I could use it and save some money. And I didn't put any off because I thought it was just too rusty. So I'm like, I found out that's how, how much of a beginner I was in woodworking. I didn't even know that you could wood glue together. Like, there was actually wood glue. Like, I'm, I'm like, really? Wood glue together? So, oh, hey, that's what I need. So I went to the home center, put some glue, put it in there, bought a clamp. I didn't even know what a clamp was. I have to put some tape, and then, hey, it was hard as a rock. I was, hey, I can use it again. So I took it to the game, got a couple hits, and then I broke again. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me glue it again. You so didn't use again. enough glue, huh? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, <laughs> used up all my glue. So I'm like, okay, well, what else can I do with this bat? So I started sanding it. Well, yeah, maybe I can paint it. He's like, and then I started tinkering with it. Yeah, well, maybe I could sand it, maybe put a different color on it, put a, you know, and next thing you know, I'm like, oh, now, maybe. I wonder how to make a bat from scratch. And that's when my curiosity kicked in. It was like, how? Oh, how? I just asked, how? How can I, since I can't play, how can I pursue my love for baseball and help others <coughs> feel the joy for baseball such as I did? So how can I serve my baseball community? So I figured, you know what? You know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm a dumb guy or anything, so I can figure things out. So, so of course, just like everybody else, I went to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, okay, so how do how do they make bats? So I just type how to make bats and you know, this big factory they had this huge C and C lay. Oh, this is how we make bats. We grab this thing here, put it in here, and then program it and you you know, like two minutes later you had a bat. I'm like, Oh I can't fit the machine in my basement, you know. <laughs> I barely have enough room for my wash and dryer, so I don't know if I can fit that thing in there. So okay. So again I asked how. How did Beirut get it back? How did, you know, the first Louis Bill slogan? How was it made? And then I discovered that there was a machine called a lathe. And they could make table legs on it. And this guy took a square block like this, put it on the lathe, like, okay. And then took one of these things, and then I didn't, at the time I didn't know. Okay, we're gonna make a table leg. Put it in there, and then just started spinning. And I still don't get a table leg. I'm like, oh, that's the machine I want. <laughs> so how did I get it? Again, you know, just like, you know, typical woodworker or go to Craigslist, right? Craigslist, <laughs> eBay. So I found my own lathe that's outside, and mm -hmm. I had no idea how to use it. So, you know, use you know whatever means I could to learn. My taught myself. Like, well, I I don't even know where to go to school for this. So like, how do I learn? <laughs> so I bought some books. I went to the used bookstore. So about wood turning, started looking at some videos, um, and then just 
bought a cheap set of tools from Harbor Freight for 20 bucks. I figured, if, you know, I don't I have no clue how to use it, at least, if I mess up the tools, at least it's only 20 bucks. So I can't lose. I can only win because I learned, you know, mm -hmm. if I mess them up. So I'm like, well, I got nothing to lose. So I started, you know, turning the bats. So I'm like, okay, so I bought the lathe for like 150 bucks. It was a, a new old lathe. Oh, because it's an old model. It was still in the box from like 1988, but nobody ever used it. It was still just, I guess it was waiting for me to, you know, to, to get it, to get it out. And it was still greasy and oily. And the guy that had it bought it because he wanted to start wood turning. He never got around to it. And then he said he bought it from a state sale. So I guess whoever bought it originally never had a chance to. So they're probably in heaven. I got thankful for, for the lady. Um, so I opened it up and I put it together and I turned it back the first time and I actually brought that back right here. This is the first bat that I ever turned from the lake. Uh, first time, you know, no training, no nothing, just visualization, just studying. And, and I was able to turn it back and my daughter took it and tried to hit her little sister with it. So, yeah, for something. <laughs> so, and then, so that's the first time. And then I say, okay, well, I learned how to use the, the, the lathe, you know, basically, you know. I was even wearing a glove, that's how naive I was, I was wearing them. But I was like, you know what, okay, so now, I, you know, I want to take one to the batting cage. So, you know, I, I went ahead and just, um, I don't have, I have the original one that I made at home, but I, I finished up a bat like this, the second time. And I was like, okay, and I took it the same day I took it to the batting cage, I hit it. So I said, okay, yeah, this is, this is the real deal. And I learned how to grade the wood for professional grade. Um, and I was able to get wood mills that would serve me because I'm small time, so they usually sell in large quantities. So I did a lot of research trying to get somebody to sell me wood at low quantity. So I was just looking, looking around. I found some people that you know, helped me out by selling me some wood. And I said, well, can you sell me the, the, the high quality professional wood? Because I don't want to start just with no I, if I want to do it, I want to do it right because I had high goals of being in the major leagues. I'm like, well, if I couldn't make it as a player, I'm going to make it as a bat maker or now gloves and bat or whatever. I just I want to make it to the major leagues. So even if I'm just starting out, if I had to start with that high mindset, you know, you know, I, I make it to professional quality now, even though I just serve amateurs. But that's that's what I want to you know to take. You know? And I put my name on every bat because I want to stand by my name, Barrett. And I use different types of wood. This one in particular is yellow birch. Uh, and then the traditional uh, finish, white ash. This has been used for over 100 years, which the trees are dying because of the emerald border. Yeah. And you know, it's my favorite wood because I grew up using white ash, which is probably like most of you. Uh, so baseball started looking around at different types of wood because the game depended on, you know, white ash, so say. And then maple started emerging. Oh, this is a maple. So maple is hard, and it will sick in the search of maple, because it will break, it will shatter, and it will cause some injuries to people. So they determined some testing. Uh, this thing that right here, because it's, a, it's not a non-porous wood, it's hard wood, they had to do this testing where you put the ink on the grain and it, it tells you the slope of grain of the maple and it, it, it's a determinant it, it gives you a gauge whether that wood is professional grade or if it when it breaks whether it's going to fly off and hit somebody so that's that's some research that major league baseball pay for and all bad makers in the professional game are supposed to lie about that and i'm doing it because that's that's you know that's what i want to do because eventually i'm going to have to do it anyway so that's just some of the intricacies that I have to deal with, um, but it's it's a great it's great to do. It. Um, here, I want to pass around some bats if you want. That's right. Juan, do you have to do that uh, ink test on all bats? No, just yellow birch and maple because they're non porous and white ash. You can see the grain already, um, and it has to be straight in the handle. And let's see. So that's this. So the, the different. Different grades like maple is really hard, very hard, and a lot of players like it because because of the hard surface it provides more, I guess, more distance. But 
to me, it's up to feel how you feel, which would you like. You can still get home runs with White right Ash, you can still home runs with Gilbert, but it's up to the comfort of the player. And what sets me apart is that I talk to the player before I make the bat. I, I like to talk to them. I like to get a feel for what kind of kind of player they are. Okay, do you like to you know you like to trip for the fences? You like to hit line drives? How about your, your, the size of your hands? Do you like to use grip, batting gloves? Okay, maybe I can modify the handle. And I take the time. It takes me more time, but I was like, well, I want to build a relationship. You know, I just, you know, yeah, I want to sell bat, but I want to build a relationship because, uh, you know, especially in the di digital age, sometimes you, you lose that. Um, I mean, I mean, I love digital age, but at the same time, you still want to have connection. And I saw that in, you know, in where I live, Bridgman County, that. Yeah, you go to a store, you get a bag, you know, but you don't, you, you don't have a personal connection with that. And, and I provide that, and I'm able to talk to the players, see what their needs are, and connect with them. Because I play, even though I didn't play professionally, but I know a lot about the game and kind of listen to what they do. Um, let's see. Some of the bats that I made, um, you know, a lot of you were interested in this little mallet here. It's a glove mallet. I, I just developed it recently because I started getting manufactured gloves. And if you, you're not familiar with baseball gloves, they come pretty hard and stiff. And it takes a while to break in. So what this allows to do is to <laughs> you know, so if you do that continuously and then beat it up all over the place, it kind of helps in the breaking process of the, of the level. Uh, so, you know, it could also be used as a carbon if you guys are interested. So, um, let's see what else. Um, let's see. So, I make bats for adults. Yeah. What qualifications do you look for in wood? Any type of wood? For grain, for weight, for density, for moisture, or what do you look for? Well, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of things that you look for. Like, the mill that I get it from, the wood is specifically made for bats. So, well, even before you cut the tree, the tree has to be, the, you know, looked at. Is that does it have a straight path to the sun? Is it straight enough? Is it even worth cutting for bats? That's one thing that the, the wood mill, you know, does. Um, so they look at that like, even from the beginning. You know, uh, look at the, and then once they, they mill it, it has to be straight grain. And there's there's certain ways to to get the straight grain. You either if a sawyer knows how to do it. You know, it's, he has to be an expert sawyer, knowing where how to cut to get the grain, or you split it. Those are two different methods of cutting the wood. The preferred method of uh, it's split, because I guess when you split it, it turns the grain. So that that's one thing that you look for. So even before I get the wood into my shop, it's already graded towards professional or amateur mm -hmm. or literally. So I and I pay more for the quality. And then once I get it, I have to weigh each one. Each one weighs differently. And determining on the, how the weight is, it depends what kind of bat I make. It, it depends the size. Um, you know, for instance, like, if it's going to be big like this one, it has to be a lighter weight, starting weight. So each bat is a different model. Uh, so I have to keep a chart. And I have to keep a record of what weight of ability yielded this type of model, so I have to make sure that I get the, the right weight. So that's a lot of things that go into it. And sometimes I make a bat by hand, it doesn't come out the way that the customer wanted. I'm oh like, well, I gotta start over. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, it takes me a little longer to get on the bat, but well, I wanna make sure you get what you want. Uh, so sometimes, you know, especially with the hand making process, it takes a little longer. Uh, let's see. Is that yeah. So Juan, yes. When a guy comes over and orders a bat from you, he gives you the length, the grip, the weight. Yeah. What other criteria? Oh, the color. Oh well. Yeah. 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 yeah like some some spray painted. If yeah. You well, yeah. They want you know paint or stain or natural. Or, right. And I offer those options in my in my website. Uh, a lot of times, I you know I just work with them to. Because I started the website just to kind of help the process. You know, they could fill out the form, or, right. and then if they got any questions, they could contact me. And a lot of the people that order already know me, and they already kind of know me. So. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, a lot of the baseball hat, you have 30, 28, 32, 34, 36. 
Is that the length of the bat? Yeah. Okay, now would be the longer the bat, the heavier it would be. Yeah. Uh, but does that, I mean, you know, if you have a 28, 20 inch bat, is that a certain weight, 36, is that a certain? Oh, yeah. Bat? Well, the 20 inch bat is probably for a little leaguer, and it's okay. probably probably going to weigh about 22 ounces. Okay. For, for, the, for the, you know, typical bat for, like, say, an amateur play is 33 inches. So a standard weight would be about 30 ounces, which would be about, you know, there's a length to weight ratio. So like, if it's 33 inches, you want it to be about 30 ounces. So it's like, they call it minus three. That's, that's lingo, baseball lingo for bats. The so, baseball, does baseball, do they have any Special criteria you gotta meet. Yeah, um, I believe it's Babe Ruth's bat. I think it's like 30, I think that's the max. Oh, like, okay. I, I forget. I it's a huge bat. It's like 42 inches or something. Wow. Like, he used to weigh like, yeah, it was like 42 inches by 44 ounces or something, something huge like that. But that was the criteria that baseball said. Like, it can't be any bigger than that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean you're, you're a rubber jack. I mean, you're gonna be swinging this. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Yes, sir. turn I turned it freehand. Uh, actually, that's how I got to uh, got here. I bought a duplicator. It was it was taking too much time to set up, and I sold it to. Yeah, <laughs> sold it to him. It's a pain like, in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I said, it's it. I'm just be hand turning. I enjoy hand turning anyway. That's that's my passion because. Uh, I love wood turning now, and I love woodworking. Uh, wood turning is like therapeutic for me. Um, yeah, it's a business, but I love turning a bat because you know the spinning wood and just the shaving. It's just it's like my time. It's to you know, in in and I'm thinking about who's gonna use it while I make it. So it's kind of like you know, meditation or praying or something. Like that. I don't know. It's just hard to describe, but it's it's, it's great. All the uh... oh, sorry. Every, every once in a while in Major League Baseball. Uh... A uh, batter will break the bat. Uh, is that because he's not holding it correctly, or is it made poorly? Oh no, old bats are going to break eventually because the pitcher is trying to get you out. That's the thing. Old bats break, uh, even if they're great quality, because it depends on where it hits on the bat. I mean, yeah, the, the quality obviously plays a part. That how how straight the grain is, how good the quality of the wood is. Uh, a, a good quality bat's gonna have straight grain here. Uh, and they're all gonna break eventually. If the pitcher throws you a pitch and it hits right here, I mean, there's no way in the world that's gonna hold up. I, I do have bats that, since I started four years ago, there's still bats out there that I made, and they're still being used. Because also, the hitter plays a part in that too. The hitter, if they consistently hit it in the barrel, and they're, if they're an expert, they're, gonna, they're not gonna break as many bats as a, as a player beginning to use. Uh, with bats because you know young players as they learn you know they're going to get jammed here so they're going to break more bats or they're going to hit it here the optimal place to hit the balls right here is called the sweet spot right here there's a dimple at the end of, of the bat why that's called cupping that started about um, let's see i think about 30 years ago i don't know if it was johnny bench or somebody else i think somebody and then they realized that if you cup it right here, you can actually make the bat lighter, right. which the cups help because it allows you to use a denser wood, a heavier wood. So if you use a heavier wood, it's a denser wood, and it, 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 the chances are that it's gonna last longer, and then with a denser wood, you'll be able to hit the ball for it. So it, it reduces the weight of the barrel <coughs> to help you speed up the bat. Right. Take a look at this one. It don't seem like there's not much weight that is lost there. Uh, it's about half an ounce. Yeah, but it makes a difference. It makes a big difference uh, between a bat, not cup, and cup. Even a little bit of cup kind of makes a difference, especially with the professionals or, you know, they're very superstitious and it's all about feel. You know, they want that extra half an ounce. If they could get that little extra edge over the pitcher, you know, I want to give it to them to help them succeed. If, I, if it's within my power, I would. Are you doing all the finishes? Yes, I am. Yes, I do all my finishes myself. Yeah, that one's the camouflage, snake camel, you know, tapping into my military heritage. <laughs> so I figured, let me, let me start doing some camouflage and stuff. I even make one for a mother's day, pink. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a big mom. Very popular. <laughs> <laughs>